Hey everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Malacca, Malaysia, which is one of the most historically significant cities in Malaysia. It's an incredible city just to walk around. It's a heritage city, and it also happens to have some incredibly delicious food. And so today we're gonna go on a Malaysian food tour of Malacca. Uh, we're gonna eat a bunch of delicious food. So it's about 9 a.m. We're getting started for breakfast. To begin this food tour of Malacca today, we're right in the old city, we're right in the heart of the heritage town on Jonker Street. Um, and one of the things that's very, very famous to eat is chicken and rice, but it's a, it's a unique to Malacca style. And so we've just arrived at the restaurant. Uh, half chicken, maybe rice. This I guess. Okay, so along this street and in Malacca, they are famous for chicken, but not just chicken rice, but chicken rice balls. So, thank you very much. Here comes the chicken. Thank you. Terima kasih. And you'll find quite a few restaurants in Malacca that serve chicken rice balls. Uh, but when I asked my friend Agnes, thank you Agnes, and my friend Agnes is from Malacca, she said this is where she comes to eat chicken rice balls. Uh, so this is where we are to begin this food tour of Malacca, um, starting the day with some, some comfort food. So three components to this dish. One is the chicken, which is boiled. Then you have the rice, which is cooked with the chicken broth. Um, and in this unique case in Malacca, they're formed into little bite-sized balls before they serve them which is very unique um, and then the third component is the sauce and before trying that sauce I'm just gonna try one of the rice balls similar to a, like a fish ball shape mm. okay it's a much different like much gooier texture than if you just had a plate of steamed rice much more moist and wet and then really like vibrantly chickeny you do taste like the the real like smoky aroma of the chicken. I'll grab this guy. Chicken appears to be quite moist and oily. Mm. Yeah, it is. It, I think it has a sesame kind of taste to it. Um, it's very juicy, oily, and it's not like ultra, ultra tender. It does have some like chewy texture to it, which I like in a chicken. Okay, and then finally to try that sauce, I'll dip my, the remaining bite of this chicken into this sauce. Oh, the sauce is like very vinegary. I wasn't expecting it to be more of a sour. It's nice and sour. It's garlicky and ginger. And then just a little bit spicy from the chilies, but you really, the, the vinegar comes in nicely. I like that. That kind of like cuts the, the oiliness of the chicken. Okay, moving back for a rice ball. And this for this rice ball, I'm just gonna submerge and let it just roll around in that sauce. And I think the next test is to bite half of the, the rice ball so we can see the, the, the cross section. It's like almost at the stage before it becomes a porridge, yet like all mushed together. So it's really like, it's really easy to eat. And like the vibrancy of the chicken in each rice ball is, is what's really enjoyable to me. Mm. Mm. And their sauce is really good. I think that there might be some sesame oil in there. It's um, it's very like chicken juicy, and you want to mop up your. You want that sauce to be mopped up in your chicken. You want it to absorb that all you can. And that completes Hainanese chicken rice balls, Malacca style. Breakfast was excellent, the chicken rice balls, yeah, that's just something, it's, it's iconic, but it's actually pretty good. We have about 30 minutes until the next restaurant opens, which, by the way, is gonna be one of the ultimate, one of the, I, I think it's one of the iconic representative dishes, foods of Malacca. But anyway, we're right in the historic center of Malacca. Malacca is a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its preservation of history and its preservation of the, of the central town area. Uh, but as you're walking around, you notice all of the different cultures. It's really a melting pot of uh, have influenced that, that have made Malacca what it is today. The British, the Portuguese, the Dutch, uh, Chinese and Indian, and even Malacca. The name Malacca comes from a, 
Malacca tree. I believe this is the real Malacca tree, which is also, uh, we just looked up, it's also the Indian gooseberry. So it has a, an edible fruit. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the Indian gooseberry and this is what we, we just found one on the ground. Okay, we gotta move now though. It's time to go eat the next meal. This is a restaurant that's very well known for their asam pedas, which is one of the iconic dishes of Malacca, something you have to eat when you're here. Very excited to try it. What? Which one is like the specialty asam pedas? Well, white snapper. Okay. Uh, this is a... Uh, Sindilang. Catfish. catfish? Yeah. Uh, Macro. Stingray. Stingray. Uh, and Okay, so asam pedas. This is a dish that I have been looking forward to well, all day since this morning, since I've been thinking about Malacca. I ordered a couple of different fish. One, this one, he said, I believe it's barramundi. Barramundi, it's a uh, Asian sea bass, I think. Uh, then a mackerel, shorthead Indian mackerel, and then a piece of stingray. And this sauce, it just looks so rich. There's spice in it, it's red. There's a little bit of oil, there's okra in here. That looks incredible. I'm gonna start with, actually, maybe I'll just try some of that, that uh, sauce first. Oh, that's awesome. It looks like really, really spicy, but it's actually not very spicy. But the fragrance is amazing. You taste like, I could be wrong, but to me, my like initial taste that I get is uh, torch ginger flower. I'm not totally sure, uh, but it does kind of have like a floral, sour, gingery taste to it. Um, it's, what I like is it's not too salty. It's like balanced with sourness. And yeah, it's not nearly as spicy as it looks, but it is really incredibly flavorful and delicious. And I'm gonna reach in with my fingers, which is the, the typical way to eat in Malaysia. Just kind of mix everything around. And it works so well because then you get to, to mash up everything. You can mix the rice. You see how you can evenly, without with a fork or spoon, you wouldn't be able to mix everything and get all the sauce coating each grain of rice like this. It's really good, it's really soothing. It's not like extremely sour, but it's like a balanced sourness that, so that just like works well with the, the floral kind of earthy taste of it. And then the fish is really good. You can taste the freshness of the fish. Moving on to the mackerel. And I'm gonna take off a piece of the side of this mackerel. And you're gonna wanna just completely let as much of that sauce just absorb into every piece of fish and every piece of, and every single bite that you take. And for this bite, I'm gonna uh, de-shell my, my salted egg. It's a salted preserved egg, so you kinda gotta scoop it out of the shell. And they serve this with to us on every plate of rice. I'll grab a little piece of the salted egg this bite, mix it into the, the fish and the the asam pedas. Mm. Mm. Like a salty, kind of starchy cheesiness of the egg. Okay, and then the final asam pedas that we got is the stingray. We got a nice stingray steak here. Um, and again, it's the same asam pedas with uh, okra in it. I'll take some of the, the stingray though. String it apart because there's a whole, like, kind of bone structure running through it. Onto my rice. This is a gravy that's just made for rice. It would, it just, it just makes rice complete. Mm, mm, mm. And you know what also I, I potentially taste in the asam pedas is shrimp paste. Um, you can tell, taste that like complexity of saltiness. And then I also ordered a plate of vegetables with uh, sambal belachan, which is the shrimp paste, shrimp paste sambal. Some type of chunk in there too then. Oh, that is wonderful. That is, now that's a sharp sourness. It almost tastes like, I think it's actually the peel of the lime that's like kind of pickled in, in there. It's very sour, a little bit spicy. You taste the shrimp paste in there. Oh man, that's like a, that is a jolt of flavor. Okay, I'll try one of the okras next. Rehydrate it. Mm, 
bursting with that sour spicy sauce. My favorite is the, the Asian sea bass, the barramundi, I believe that's what it is. Uh, it is the meaty, the, the most meaty, and also I think the most flavor absorbs into it and kind of soaks it up, and that's exactly what you want to happen. This is an extraordinary dish. Ah, iced lemon tea, one of my favorite drinks in Malaysia. That was an incredible meal. The asam pedas, it's something that you've got to eat when you come to Malacca and you should go out of your way to eat it. This is a great place. Uh, it's called Pakman. They're friendly here. It's a whole food court. You can order all sorts, an assortment of different food. The asam pedas is the highlight. Uh, but again, you will find this dish throughout Malacca. That meal was so good. It's one of those meals where you just want to lean back in your chair. A <laughs> Couple of seats. And if we didn't have more to eat today, we would probably just call it a day right here. Sit in the breeze, relax the ocean breeze is coming in. That's just a happy, happy meal. One of the things a lot of people eat and just, well, drink when they come to Malacca is a coconut shake. And there's quite a few places that are famous, especially close by to the beach for coconut shakes. This is a very, very well-known place for the original Klebang original coconut shake. It almost has like an amusement park feel to it. There's a, a red arch that you go under to come in here. They have the pile of coconuts. Uh, it's it's a very family family friendly place. What is the special? Special ice cream, regular no ice cream. Ah, regular no ice cream. Yeah, special ice cream. <laughs> this is one of those tables that if your knee bumps it, it might collapse. Okay, got two different uh, coconut shakes. One is the special and one is the regular. They're both the same, just the special comes with a scoop of ice cream on top. And you've gotta eat it pretty fast before the entire thing melts on you, but I'm not totally sure what's in here. If it's a combination of both the coconut water and coconut milk. Mm. Yeah, you taste the vanilla ice cream. You, the ice is like, it's kind of like, uh, it's not a fine, fine ice, so it's sort of, you crunch on it. It's very icy cold, um, and you taste the, the coconut. I think it's mostly coconut water, maybe a little bit of coconut milk at the same time. And this one is a regular. It didn't come with a spoon uh, because it's, I think you just stir it up. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely, it even, even the, the regular one does have a little bit of a vanilla taste to it, but it's sweetened. I think there might actually, now that I look at it closer, there might actually be the meat, a little bit of meat of the coconut plus some of the water in here that's blended up. Yeah, it's really like something you would want to be eating, like after you go to the beach, you're hot, you come here. This is a beach drink, that's what it is. And then just, we couldn't resist one real fresh coconut. Look how much water is in there, that's loaded. Yeah, this is what I prefer. This is my favorite. Just the natural coconut, the slight sourness, the natural sweetness, the refreshment. Yeah, for me, nothing can beat the real natural, just the natural taste of the real coconut. Okay, whew, yeah, the sweat. Uh, but that was a worthwhile stop for the coconut shake. And yeah, as I looked around, every almost everybody ordered the nasi lemak or the, I think they're fried fish cakes. Uh, so that would also be something to order here. But that was a perfect beach afternoon refreshing snack. Okay, let's move on. eating satay chaluk, which is, uh, it's from Malacca. You choose your own skewers, and then you have some peanut satay sauce in the middle of your table. You choose your skewers, you dip them in the sauce, and it's just kind of fun to eat, as well as delicious at the same time. So I'm gonna go to the fridge now and choose some skewers and then dip. I know this is good. Boom. Once you get your full tray of all the different skewers that you, you choose, uh, you bring it back to your table and you have very conveniently 
the boiling sate sauce right in the middle of your table. Ah, this one nice. You can put another one here. Oh, and you can put that in your dipping bowl. Okay, you can test it. So hot, nah? Does this one need to boil for a long time also? This one's all put inside here. Okay, put it inside. Put this time. Okay. Oh, two, two, two or three minutes. Oh, two or three minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. It's very aromatic, yeah, but it smells very nutty and a little bit fishy. I'm just gonna add a number of skewers, but it can, it can, probably the max capacity of this tub of sate sauce is about 10 skewers at once, so I think that's good. We'll, we'll let these boil and then eat them before we add the rest. Rather than many other versions of sate where you get your grilled skewer of meat uh, and then dip it into the provided sauce, this is a full sate cooking experience. So you actually boil your skewer of vegetables or meat in the sauce, it's, so that like absorbs the flavor into the ingredients. But at the same time, you also have little orange bowls here where the owner said that you can actually scoop to the bottom where some of the, the sauce, like ingredients, like it's like pulpy ingredients have sunk to the bottom and actually re-dip again. Uh-oh, we're losing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we lost some things. Uh-oh, I splattered. Oh yeah, some of these things have been cooking for a few minutes. I think it's time to, to test it. But it does get kinda, it starts to, to bubble around. You get like, like little peanut and oil driplets just bubbling around. Um, Wow, and some things fall off, so I know there's gonna be a bunch of ingredients that fall off at the bottom of this jacuzzi of sate sauce. I'm gonna try the okra stuffed with fish paste. Oh, oil, oh, that's hot. When you boil it in the sauce, it really absorbs, it's quite sweet. But then it's nutty, a little bit fishy, but it's really nice and balanced. It's it's really like a it's like a snacking flavor of, of like sweet and sour and spicy all together. Set the skewers aside, go down to the bottom, get some of that. Oh yeah, there it is. It's like a paste down there. You're gonna add this to your bowl like as a dipping sauce. And you can see that that you can re-dip it as you're so you're cooking it in the same sauce, but then you're dipping it at the same time. I'm gonna move in for those mushrooms and those are oyster mushrooms and you can be guaranteed mushrooms are just gonna soak up just absorb so much of that saute gravy and it just kind of slides off the skewer mm. yeah that's hot but yeah it absorbs so much of the saute sauce it is like a sponge mm. Mm -hmm. the mushroom is so juicy I'm trying to find that porky, unknown porky parts. It could be snout, it could be ears, it could be just pure fat. A good bite right now. It's so awesome. <laughs> it's so gelatinous. <laughs> but like, like chewy, I just have cartilage at the same time. Oh, I'm so hot. I'm still digging cartilage out of my teeth. <laughs> 30 seconds. I think it might be snout. <laughs> Next, I'll try the, the water morning glory. Set this into my bowl. They've done a real like tight coiling job on this. Mm. That one is good. So you've got the crispness of the vegetable. Oh. And then they tally up your bill and you pay by skewer. I gotta admit, that was a lot of fun to eat though. And this, I guess, maybe is the, the main shop, but then over here, it's the same name. I think this is just the extra, extra seating section with this side. Still in Malacca, but just down the coast along the ocean, you will find a lot of seafood restaurants, especially ikan bakar restaurants, which are grilled fish restaurants. And so I looked through the list of many of the restaurants, some of the recommendations. Uh, some of them are really, really famous and really huge seafood restaurants, but I wanted more of a kind of a laid back, smaller restaurant. And so I just kind of found one that looks really good. We're on our way there now. It's about a 25 minute drive from the center of Malacca. So we're on our way for a seafood dinner.
That was about a 20 minute drive from the center of Malacca, but it's a fishing village. You see the fishing boats, there's a canal that runs uh, an inlet of water, but then we're very close to the ocean. You get the ocean breeze and there's like three or four different seafood restaurants all kind of spread out together. And right now it's not very busy because we're here very early. It's not quite dinner time for most local people yet. So we've chosen to come to uh, Ikan Bakar Haji Musa. Yeah. Haji Musa. They have all the seafood laying out, a bunch of fish, especially stingray is one of their main fish. And it's actually self-service. You just kind of grab what you like. You, you get to choose your own seafood and then they will prepare it for you and they have the grill going. Yeah. Ah, okay. The whole thing? Yeah. Okay, sure. Or this one? Yeah. Okay, big one is good. Okay. BBQ. Thank you. <laughs> for the shrimp, he really cleaned them up and then he dumped, dunked them in what looks like a garlic and smells like a garlic sauce and then onto the grill. And he's just now preparing the fish. He's going to add sambal and then wrap it in a banana leaf and then onto the grill. For the grilled fish, for the ikan bakar, they cleaned up the fish. He first really lathered it in a garlic sauce, like a real garlic puree. Smell that garlic. Uh, then he put it into the grill and put it on the charcoal. That's going to grill for a while and then I think he's going to add the sambal at some point. Chili padi. Very spicy or this one? Very good. Ah, spicy. Cool, man. Ah, nice. Thank you. Terima kasih. And then the final step in making your ikan bakar is after the, the fish is pretty much cooked, he then takes it off the grill, he puts a layer of sambal chili paste on top, and then he covers that with a banana leaf and then puts it back onto the grill with the sambal facing down and the banana leaf facing down. And that way, the, the like direct strong heat takes uh, or, or it comes into the banana leaf instead of burning that chili paste and then the chili paste just kind of absorbs into the fish. Let's go snack on the things that are already ready. I know that they brought us the fried squid and the shrimp already to our table. Mm. Very simple. It's breaded and then deep fried. Mm. And for the shrimp, he just he literally just dunked them and like really splashed them with that garlic sauce and then grilled them. Yeah, you can smell the garlic for sure. Peel the skin off. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's incredibly good. They're really firm. Mm -hmm. It is so, it's like pure pureed garlic. It's salty and then smoky from that kind of low charcoal heat. Yeah, that sauce is kind of sweet, a little bit spicy, and very oniony, shallot-y. We gotta start with that stingray and lift the lift the lid. Oh yeah, even the banana leaf is just like, it's soft in some parts, but you can feel how it's like crunchy, crunchily roasted in some parts. You peel back. Oh, 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 oh look at that sambal. Oh, and just a poof over Roma. Oh, that smells so good. Let's reveal the, the other fish as well. Oh man, that just smells so incredibly good. And the aroma, the fragrance of the actual banana leaf, the sambal stingray, ikan bakar stingray. And yeah, we got a small one. This is an entire fish. Um, and then yeah, you can see that beautiful sambal. Okay, just gonna, all oh, the stringiness of it. Look at that. You can really see the texture, the strings of it onto the rice. That's fantastic. Mm. The sambal is a little bit sweet, but it is a little bit spicy. And then I think what's amazing is just how it embeds into the fish because of the way how they cook it. And the garlickiness, and then also the aroma of the banana leaf. You really, you really taste the banana leaf in there. And stingray is such an amazing, it has this amazing texture, similar to chicken but a little bit softer, but it's very firm, very neutral tasting. This has, oh, the juiciness of that. Oh, I was not expecting it to be that juicy, but if you put your fingers in it, just you can just see the juice coming out of it. I'm gonna dip this one to the, into the other sauce and then onto my rice. All right, cool. Got it. <laughs> totally different texture, equally as good. But then that, that sauce is quite sweet. Um, but it has a nice like shallot oniony taste to it. And then the owner was very nice to hook us up with some chili padi. He said for that extra 
Oh, it just kind of slid on there. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, I will. Chilies are a little bit spicy, but not, they're not really that spicy actually, but they are very fragrant. All that's left now are a few fish bones and an empty banana leaf wrapper. We've reached the end of this Malaysian food tour of Malacca. It's been an incredible day and that was a delicious seafood meal to end the day. The ikan bakar was the highlight. That was, yeah. Oh, and the shrimp though, they were really, really good as well. Nice, friendly fishing village. Uh, but today has been a fantastic day and Malacca is, it's such a laid back place. It's such a wonderful city to explore, to walk around the culture, the history, the food um, and the diversity of the food like in all of Malaysia. It's a melting pot and I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now and also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Malacca. See you on the next video.